Hello, this is Dr. Walker again, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm talking about quercetin. Um, I, I think I've talked about it before in one of the other videos that I've done. It's a bioflavonoid, um, and uh, it, it, it protects the lung, and I'll talk to you about that, how that works in here, here in a second. But anyway, um, I was talking to a friend of mine a couple of days ago regarding uh, how do they uh, manage patients who are COVID positive, whether they leave the hospital or they just get a, uh, an initial diagnosis. So specifically, I was talking about one person, uh, a person that had a COVID positive test and um, what was their process. And so they, they did tell the individual he was going to go home for essentially for 10 days. Uh, they ordered for him um, cough medicine and Tylenol just in case he has a fever. Um, now, in, in my mind, when a person feels it necessary to go and get a COVID test, they're feeling unwell. Something is happening, they're either short of breath, they're feeling something is, 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 is awry, and so they, they go to get this test. Anyway, um, he, he did send me a copy of what he uh, what they give to patients, and the, the gist of it is, is this. On the document, all it says is that you're, you're out for 10 days, that when you're done um, this 10 day period you will not have to be tested again um, you will just go back to go back to work and if you're feeling worse in the process um, then go to the hospital now <laughs> there's just so much wrong there is just absolutely so much wrong with that whole process um, because I can imagine a layperson what do they you know how do they understand what does that mean unwell right does it you know does it mean if you're just not feeling yourself today, then go to the hospital? You know, are there criteria that you can use to then say that you should use to say, you know, if this, then this. If you're feeling these things, then do this. Right? right? When I did general medicine a long time ago, when we discharged patients from the hospital, um, or they had a positive test, whatever it may be, there was always some kind of uh, regimen for them, and essentially, uh, sort of the if then this principles right apply to all of those things and so i was kind of surprised that you know there were no sort of blood pressure parameters there were no pulse ox parameters there were no um fever parameters there were no right you know shortness of breath. nothing in terms of uh what to do if things happen to you now i i think if you are a physician if you are a, a nurse or one of the technology uh support staff i think for the most part you'd understand essentially what you know what blood pressure parameters you should probably use or what pulse ox parameters you should probably use. But if you're, you know, a, a non-medical person, and again, I, I mean no disregard or disrespect from the standpoint, you may not understand those parameters pretty well enough for you to get to the hospital when you should. In fact, I would suspect then if you just sort of choosing, quote, go to the hospital when you're feeling unwell, that you may be behind the curse. In other words, I don't know that people would, you know, in COVID, just go to the hospital because they're feeling, quote, unwell. I think for, for many people, they would wait until they can't, you know, wait any longer, and then they would consider going to the hospital. Um, so I was kind of surprised about that. So I, I thought I'll talk a little uh, about that and give some, maybe do some videos regarding what my thoughts would be in terms of uh, what a person should do. But anyway, quercetin. I think perhaps that what one of the least things you should offer and, and, and again when I talk about medications um, or over-the-counter things first talk with your doctor before either changing your regimen or adding anything to you to, to your list I, because you know I don't know exactly what other complications you might you might have what other medication you're taking and so I don't know what the interaction you might have so talk with your provider about things that I'm telling you about in terms of what you should do now for me um, and my family <clears throat> before um, and, and none of us have had COVID yet and I've not been I've not had the vaccine none of my family's had the vaccine um but before um any of that happens we are taking and again i've made a list of things that we talked about before that we're taking so in in, in my case i'm taking um uh quercetin 500 milligrams every day with uh 30 milligrams of zinc that's the that's one part and vitamin d as i said before i talked about what i take with vitamin d and vitamin c as well but specifically quercetin on, on this video so that's what i do 500 milligrams of quercetin um, with my zinc every day now um, and, and this is kind of similar to the EVMS protocol that they use as an outpatient uh, process of parameters for people uh, before they have a diagnosis of COVID um, now if I were to become symptomatic now in, when I say symptomatic I mean if I am or my family or someone I know were to get symptoms that could be COVID um, in my mind that's when 
the clock starts for what I'm about, what I'm about to talk about next. Um, if you were to become symptomatic, so symptomatic from Stanford, I'm going to get a COVID test today. Once I have that in my hand, once I have that as the thing that I'm thinking about, I'm going to start several things. So for me, I would then um, double up on my, in, in fact, increase my quercetin. Now, what that means for me would be I would do a thousand milligrams of quercetin with um, a 30 milligram of zinc twice daily. So a thousand milligrams twice daily and zinc with each of, with, with each of those uh, dosing. So a thousand milligrams of quercetin with 30 milligrams, 30 milligrams of zinc, uh, do that essentially twice a day. I still do my vitamin, my vitamin D and my vitamin C, I would bump up now to three grams. So I'll take one in the morning, one at lunch and one in the afternoon. So that's what I would do. But again, there's whole lots of other things that a person should do. I would not wait though. I would not wait until I'm quote feeling uh, very, very sick to start this process, nor would I wait until my test results come back to be positive. So in other words, if I'm feeling symptomatic at that point, I'm behind the curve already. Right. Okay. So Kirsten, as I said before, it's a, it's a bioflavonoid. It works really well with zinc. And with zinc, what it does, as I said before, it helps to transport zinc across the cell membrane. Once it's across the cell membrane, zinc then begins to take its charge and do what it does best by inhibiting viral replication. Specifically, COVID viral replication, or any viral replication inside the cell. It, zinc, doesn't get across the cell membrane so well by itself, so it needs the transport. So people, some people actually say, uh, this is the gun bullet process. So in other words, uh, kirsten is the is the gun and the bullet is actually zinc so one they work really well with each other so the the kirsten takes zinc across the membrane and then zinc does its thing inside the cell inside the cell again it inhibits viral replication uh flavonoids essentially are found in lots of other things they, they're found in green tea black tea uh red wine um uh raspberries red onions specifically apples as well so lots of other things but not in the concentration that we're talking about. Again, it's 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 a different con concentration. And again, what I like about Kirsten is that it inhibits sort of replication, specifically uh, in the lung. It's a, it's an anti-inflammatory. Uh, it's an uh, uh, antioxidant, and it's also an antiviral. So again, lots of properties, and people just use it sometimes as an uh, sort of an as an allergy medicine uh, at times. But I love it for all those things. That being said, <laughs> um, I went looking for. Uh, Kirsten for one of uh, someone I, that I work with because he's trying to find some for himself. He's again, he's behind the curve now a little bit. So I, I was trying to find some for him to get it to him to begin his process. Now, I didn't know him. Well, I, I know him, but I didn't know him from the standpoint of what he was taking before, uh, uh, before um, he's now, quote, sick with COVID. So my regimen to him would have been, again, as I said before, a thousand milligrams of Kirsten with zinc, 30 milligrams. Uh, twice daily plus vitamin D and vitamin C as I said before. So I was trying to find some for him. However, at GNC, Walmart, um, Target, and Publix, I checked, and all those places are out of Kirsten. So maybe people are sort of catching on now in terms of the benefits of this wonder drug um, for, for, for COVID. And now this is, in, in my mind, this is irrespective of of whether or not you've had the vaccine. So whether or not you've had the vaccine, because again, lots of people who have had the vaccine, um, and, and in this case, this, this this friend of mine, is he's had the vaccine, and he's, he's now had a breakthrough infection. And um, uh, so, so anyway, disregarding whether or not you've had the vaccine or, you know, or, or not, this is something I would suggest. And again, talk with your doctor, because there's sometimes, so some people, for example, with hypothyroid, uh, disorders may have some complications with too much kerosene in their, in their system. Um, but so talk with your doctor before you do this. And again, I would, for me, I'd rather you have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And again, this is, for me, this is the number one thing I would do uh, if I have um, symptoms related to COVID, what I said before, in, in terms of those vitamin, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, kerosene and zinc combination, I'd have all of those things. Um, taking and before I have any problems, I'd definitely be taking sort of again my vitamin D, my vitamin C, and the whole list of things I said before, plus my quercetin um, and my zinc every day. Anyway, the point is though, be certain to have some in your house. I'm not telling you to go and buy a whole box of it, but just have enough in your home just in case you or your family become sick. And I'd, again, I'd hate to have you uh, uh, get symptomatic COVID and not have at least these basic things in your house. And to me, you know, going home with, quote, cough medicine and Tylenol is just not uh, not going to cut it. Anyway, one last thing I was going to say. 
um, COVID by itself, uh, the spike protein or the spike portion of the uh, viron, viral particle itself is very thrombogenic, right? It's, it's, it, it, it helps the body to create more clots, if you would. Um, so people with COVID, sometimes even with a vaccine, uh, just that spike protein, uh, so that, that spike portion of the virus uh, tends to become very thrombogenic. That being said, people with COVID diagnosis tend to sometimes have um, blood clots, whether it be uh, in, in, in the peripheral uh, veins, in the legs, or in, in the pulmonary arteries, causing a PE, a pulmonary embolus. Um, once you have a diagnosis of COVID, and again, talk with the doctor about what you can do, but I would certainly jump on an aspirin regimen, at least for um, at least for a week, maybe 325 milligrams of aspirin uh, per day for about a week or so, and then maybe transfer, uh, switch that to uh, 81, 81 milligram baby aspirin uh, for the next three or so weeks. But again, talk with your doctor before you start that piece of it, because again, some people can have some problems with aspirin in general, but aspirin is a very good um, sort of antiplatelet, if you would, and it would help to decrease your risk of getting um, uh, a DVT-PE in, in, in this setting. So um, anyway, thanks for listening, um, and I'll, I'll have more videos in terms of what I think a person should do, uh, especially in this COVID uh, a pandemic, in terms of what you should do uh, while you're at home with a diagnosis of COVID. Anyway, thanks for listening, Dr. Walker. Take care. God bless.